let's do some pretty basic 2D plotting, nothing really complicated, just enough to get you started. Uh, I think this video will end up being a little bit longer than I expected originally, but it still shouldn't be too difficult. Um, this is something that really threw me off uh, when I first started using Octave and FreeMap because it's really, really different from Maxima. Basically, Octave and FreeMap don't plot functions, they plot points. Then they connect the dots. So if you want to plot a function, you're going to have to create points based off that function. But let's go ahead and start out by um, plotting a few points just so you can see what I mean. So let's say x equals 1, 2, 3, and y equals, uh, let's say, 4, 7, 1. Now let's plot x against y. So hopefully you see what I mean, that this just took the points 1, 4, so the x value is 1, the y value is 4, then the x value is 2, the y value is 7, and then the x value 3, the y value 1. So that's what I mean by it plots points instead of functions. It just draws the points and then connects the dots. The x in the plot command is a list of the x coordinates, and the y, so this is a list of the x coordinates, this is the list of the y coordinates. So let's plot a function by turning a function into a list of points. Let's go ahead and make this always on top. Um, we don't have much room here, but I'll be able to expand this back out in a minute. So let's, uh, we need to, to turn a function into a list of points. I first need to create a list of x values. A list of, yeah, let's go ahead and just make a list of x values. So 0 to 10. So let's let's actually not hide that. X is going to be a list from 0 to 10. And uh, now let's make y a list of all the sign values of of uh, 0 to 10. So these are the corresponding y values to these x values. Now let's go ahead and plot these points. Now this doesn't look very good. Why didn't this look very good? Because I only did x at every integer. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to 10. I want to have my um, my points more finely set. I need to have a more finely um, tuned, not, I don't know if tuned is the right word, but I need to have a, a list that has much many more points than just integers from 0 to 10. So now I'll set x is equal from is 0 in steps of point 1 to 10. Now I'll go ahead and hide the output. Now I'll have y is sign of that list. Now let's try plot x, y again. That looks a whole lot better because I'm not just doing um, I'm not just doing integers now. This from here to here is a list of ten separate points. From here to here is a list of ten separate points. So it looks a whole lot better. Now what if we want to use a different color? There are two ways we can do that. I'll start out with the easy way. Uh, so I'll say plot x, y, now I'll just say g. That means it's going to be green. You, uh, so that's the easy way to do it. Just say g to get green, or r for red, uh, b for blue. I don't know how you get black, though, uh, except for this other more complicated way. The more complicated way gives you more options. So now that gave us, uh, we're able to do the RGB values in terms of percentages. So this is 100% R, 0% G, RGB, yeah, RGB, 100% R, 0% G, and 1% B. 100% uh, excuse me, B. So we can now use, of course we'd have to do white, that would be kind of stupid, but we could do that. Get black. yellow, any RGB value you want to. This is the more complicated way, but it gives you a whole lot more control. But let's go ahead and go back up to green, G. Uh, we could also change the width of the plot. Uh, let's go ahead and go back to G for the color. Using the line width command. See, now this made the, li the line width a whole lot a whole lot thicker, even in even thicker still. We can also add a title.
and we can add X labels and Y labels. They're kind of cut off, but only because I, they're so small. If you zoom out a little bit, it looks looks quite a bit better. See, now I can see the x-axis completely and y-axis completely. We can also add text to any specific point on the graph. So, x values. Go, I'm going to put this directly on the graph. So, x value is four. The y value is sine of 4, so that means it's going to lie somewhere along this curve, particularly about right here. And I could put text. Now I'll put text right there. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Did, the, did that wrong. Okay. If we want to start a new figure without erasing all of this, we type in figure. This is figure one, this is figure two, figure one said to be always on top. Now let's do figure two always on top. So what if we want to plot more than one function at a time? That's where we use the hold on command. This command doesn't erase previous plots, it just puts new plots on top of old plots. So let's create let's start by creating a different plot. Z is cosine of x. See, y is uh, sine of x. Now z is cosine of x. So now let's plot x, z uh, line width 2. And now let's do x, y line width 2. Whoops, I forgot to do the actual command. x, z line width 2. Now I want to do hold on. This will prevent um, FreeMAT from erasing the previous plot. Now I do X, Y. Now it puts, and this one, FreeMAT automatically does a different color. I don't know what MATLAB does, but Octave actually does not automatically specify a different color. It's going to go ahead and um, keep the same color as before. So that's something to keep in mind. When you're using Octave you, and you want different colors, you have to specify that manually. Now let's add a legend. Oops. So I use the legend command. Uh, the previous, the, the, the first thing put on the figure is always going to be the first thing on the legend. So now we have uh, Cosine corresponds to cosine, and then sine corresponds to sine. I don't know if there's a way to make this smaller or larger. Um, but uh, at this, whatever I've done with this video, you should get the basics so you could be able to go on to other places. Go like particular, in particular, probably MATLAB, uh, MathWorks MATLAB website, and look up new options. Now, saving this image in FreeMAT is no problem. Uh, you just have to click this disk icon, and it'll bring up a, uh, a uh, save figure as box. Make sure you select what kind of what kind of file you want. I actually don't know what a BW is file. Um, BW file is black and white, maybe. <laughs> but uh, so in FreeMAT, no problem. You just click on that. But in Octave, it's a little bit different. I'll go ahead and show you. So this is, I have an Octave terminal here and a th octave figure right here. So I went ahead and did this manually. Let's say I want to save this figure. Go ahead and make this always on top. Uh, so it's a you can't just right click, save as, or anything like that. You actually have to do this through a command, so that's good to keep in mind. It took me a while to figure out what this command was <laughs> because uh, the octave manual, unfortunately, is not very clear on this, but I figured it out eventually. So if I do the print command, and then the number of the figure, which in this case is 4. And then I have the file name. In this case, I'm going to do a PNG file. And then the oops, file format, DPNG. And it's going to save to whatever my working directory is, which in this case is my home directory. 
Now that's for PNG. That'd be great if you're going to put it online, but if you want to put it in a uh, LaTeX document, you don't want to use PNG. You'd, you'd be better off using EPS. So plot.eps now that gave, gave us a, um, a vector drawing instead of a uh, raster drawing. So I know that probably most of you will end up be using FreeMAT or maybe even MATLAB uh, because you'll probably be using Windows, but this is good to know so that you can uh, know how to do that if you choose to use Octave. I personally, I prefer Octave, but whatever floats your boat really works out just fine. Now what kind of plot you're going to be using, um, let's go ahead and create a new figure. I think this one always on top too. What kind of plot you're actually going to want to create is going to depend on what class you're in. But for a lot of classes, you're actually going to be getting discrete value points, like from repeated trials from a physics, exper physics experiment. So you actually won't be plotting functions, you'll just be plotting points. That means that this method for plotting, even though it might seem counterintuitive if you're used to Maxima, but this is actually really nice for the hard sciences. Uh, don't get me wrong, you probably will be plotting functions as well, so that's why I went over that. Um, but the idea of plotting lists of points is actually very convenient for a lot of practical applications. So let's say we've collected these points from whatever source we have. Uh, and these are the points that we have. So I have and some A values, I'm going to move this out of the way for now. This is our list of our A values, and this is our list of C values which mostly looks like zeros until you remember see this up here. This is actually just a lot of pretty big numbers for the most part actually. So let's try to plot this. Plot A against C. Well that is supremely unhelpful. That's just really 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 close to zero and then all of a sudden shoots up. So th that doesn't really really help us with much. So instead of using that kind of plot, the regular kind of plot, sometimes we want to have the y-axis on a logarithmic scale. And for that we use, in my head I always hear, read this as semi-loggy, but it's it's just, I don't, it's semi-log because it's only the y-axis, not the x-axis. So that is a whole lot more helpful. This plot is a whole lot better than what we had before. There's some, um, uh, what's the word, roughness right over here. But for the most part, it's a, it's a pretty smooth graph. This one makes a whole lot more sense than the one we had before. So that semi-loggy makes this information now useful. All right, that concludes this video and probably the video series, unless at some point in the distant future I decide to make some more. Uh, I hope this was helpful, and um, good luck.